So now we're going to go through counting techniques, but without repetitions. So these questions commonly come up where they actually specify without repetitions. So the question will actually say, if no repeats, or it's going to be working with people or books, for example. We're going to go through questions again, because I just think that's the best way to learn this topic. So here we have a password made up of four digit numbers. Now, how many different passwords are possible if repeat is not allowed? So no repeats, all right? So that means examples of your possible passwords are 1764 or 4530 and so on. So you can start with zero, remember? But examples of passwords that aren't acceptable is when we have one and one because a one is repeated or when we have zero and zero because a zero is re repeated or for example that or that. So you can't have, once a number has been used, so here we've used the one, we can't use that number again for the rest of them. Yeah, so that's the best way to consider this without repetitions. Let's consider it diagrammatically again. So we have our four digits here. Now let's start off with the first digit. How many different numbers can go into the first digit? It's gonna be zero to nine. So that's going to be 10 different numbers. Now, but let's just say I've taken away one because I've already used that already. So how many numbers are left to go into the second digit? Well, there's only going to be nine numbers left, right? And let's just say here, I've taken away seven. So there's two numbers taken away. So that means there's only going to be eight numbers left to be used for the third digit. And now I've used the six. So three digits have been taken away which means that only leaves me with seven numbers. And because it's and between all of them, I just multiply it all together and you should get 5,040 different ways. So whenever there's gonna be no repeats, there's always gonna be less ways because you're subtracting the different amount of numbers that can go into each one. Drawing a table can be annoying in an exam. So what you can do in exam situation is write it out like this where you go, one, two, three, four. So those are your four digits. And you can go 10 numbers can go there, nine numbers can go there, eight and seven. And you know because and between them, you just put multiply in between them. And can you see how that just gives you what we have here? Okay, so this is a method that you can use in your exams. It's just a little bit easier than drawing out a table. So the important thing you can see here is when it says without repeats, what you need to consider is what happens when you've already used one of the numbers. So essentially all you need to do is subtract it from the amount of numbers that can go into the next one. So here we've gone from 10 to nine to eight to the seven different numbers can go into the fourth digit. If we went on to the fifth digit, you would be left with six numbers and so on. Let's go on to the next question now. Okay. Here we have our password and it's made up of three numbers followed by two letters. And here, once again, we have, if repeat is not allowed, we wanna find out how many different passwords are possible. Okay? So the possible passwords are any of these, which you can see that you have no repeats of any of them, but the impossible passwords are the ones where you have, that's three repeated, or the letter is repeated, or the letter is repeated, or the number and the letter is repeated. So the same idea as before. If I've already used that three here, I can't use a three again. If I've already used the K here, I can't use that K again. So let's consider it in the same way. We have our three numbers and two letters. Let's start off with the numbers first. So how many different numbers can go in the first one? It's gonna be 10 different numbers but I've already used up the two, so there's only gonna be nine numbers left for the next one. Now I've already used up the two and the three, which means there'll be, good, there'll be eight numbers left. But when we go to the letters, we start all over again because the numbers and letters don't affect each other. There's still 26 letters left, can you see that? So there's still 26 letters here. I use my G up, so that means I'm left with 25 letters. So just because you're minusing numbers from here, it doesn't affect the letters. That makes sense. The letters is still 26 different letters that you can choose from. Because 
it's going to be and between all of them, so two and three and one and so on, we're going to use multiplication between them. So just multiply all those numbers up together and that should give you 468,000 ways. So in this one, it's just good to know that when you're working with numbers and letters, just try and consider them separately, okay? Let's have a look at question nine here. This is a one with a combination lock. So the combination lock has four dials. So remember how we had dials on the board before? And for each dial, there's six different numbers that can go into the dial. So how many unlock codes are possible if repeat is not allowed? So in this case, your possible codes are anything where the numbers are not repeated, whereas your impossible codes are anything where you do have a repeat of a number. And so over here, we want to see how many unlock codes are possible. So let's consider all the dials first. In the first dial, six numbers can be there. Okay, so any of those six numbers, one to six. But we've used up the one, so there'll be five numbers left. We've used up the two now, so there'll be four numbers left. Used up the three, there'll be three numbers left, okay? So all together, it'll be six times five times four times three. They'll give you 360 different unlock codes. So just remember for without repeats, the best way to consider it is I've taken one away, how many is left?